Hi, this is Miss Brown from Research Triangle High School. We're going to be taking a look in this a little bit at some of the poetic elements that are used in the epic poem Beowulf. Now, Beowulf was composed in Old English, and one of the techniques that they used was something called a seishura, which is actually the same root of our word cease, and to cease something means to stop it. And a seishura in poetry is a rhythmic pause, and it's something that's done to create rhythm and unity. So if you look at these lines, and these are in the Old English, so even if you can't read them, you can see how they're separated. Notice how the line is divided into two parts. And when the poet would recite them, they would always pause in between these two parts. So, akama more under Missalbom, Grendelgongen, Garusibar. You notice there would be that, that, that separation in between each line. Now, most folks who have tried to translate from the Old English into the modern translation will do something to try to preserve this sense of rhythm with the seishura. And again, that's the pause to create that division in the lines. So notice this one. This is from Burton Raphael's tra translation of Beowulf. Out from the marsh, from the foot of misty hills and bogs, bearing God's hatred, Grendel came, hoping to kill anyone he could trap on this trip to High Herat. And notice that in this case, the punctuation, the commas here, help to create that seishura. So that's a modern way of saying we're going to stop at the halfway point in each one of these first sets of lines. Now we've covered the concept of alliteration before. That's the repetition of vowel sounds. I'm sorry, the repetition of consonant sounds within a line, usually at the beginning of the words. And the Anglo-Saxons use these as well. And these get harder again to translate because you're looking at, at translating words and it's hard to keep the poetry. But again, if you look at the original, uh, the Old English, we get Grendel Gongen, Gongen, Gadesibar, Minten Se Matskada, Mana Sienes. And you notice that the first sets of lines, the repetition of the letter G or that G sound, and then the M repeats repeating again in the second one, in the second line. Now here's Burton Raffles translation again of lines one through five. Notice how the alliteration has been preserved even though the words have changed. Out from the marsh, from the foot of misty hills and bogs, bearing God's hatred, Grendel came. And again you notice the M, out from the marsh, from the foot of misty. And you can see the G on this one, bogs bearing, a G again there, God's hatred, Grendel came, hoping to kill. You see the G and the K sound in here repeating. So a good translation will try to preserve as many of the original poetic aspects as possible. Another literary device that was very common in Old English is the idea of a kenning. Now, a kenning is a poetic device that is a combination of adjectives that can take the place of a specific noun. So instead of saying someone's name, you give a couple of two or three adjectives together that describe them. So instead of saying that Beowulf went to Herod, they say he went to that gold shining hall. Gold shining hall is the same thing as Herod. It's the exact same um, the exact same thing. It's just two different ways of saying. Instead of saying that Grendel came and was a monster, it said that guardian of crime walked through the door. So you don't use the name of the creature, but you use this description of them instead. Beowulf becomes a line, not just the, the warrior lying on the floor, Beowulf lying on the floor, but the strong-hearted and wakeful sleeper. And the dragon is called a couple of different things. The sky-born foe came down to visit Beowulf. It doesn't say the dragon came to see Beowulf. And the cave guard came out at Beowulf's call, not the dragon came out at Beowulf's call. So a kenning is whenever you take a couple of, of adjectives together and use it to substitute for the noun. So we can play around with this a little bit and think about how we might do kennings for modern day things that we see. So if you have a pencil, a pencil could be that giver of words, or you might even call it a word wand if you want to get into your Harry Potter bit. So in class, I want you to think about other ways that you might describe a kitten, a singer, a plane, or a car, and some other ways that we could do combinations of adjectives instead of using that noun or the common noun to describe that person or that object, a combination of adjectives that might describe them instead.